I'm sitting here with Coralia. She is a medical doctor. In fact, she and her husband are medical doctors. And uh, they originally come from Romania, but they emigrated to Australia, where they have been living since 1987. And now they are visiting us here in South Africa, and they have a story to share with us. Perhaps you would like to introduce yourself to the audience. Yes, I'm Coralia Jigao. So I am a medical doctor. My husband, Chris Jigao, is a medical doctor too. We have three beautiful boys, and we live in Melbourne. Now, I understand that uh, you have quite a interesting past. I understand your husband had to make his escape uh, from Romania while Ceausescu was ruling there. Yeah, yeah. And then you followed afterwards. Yes, my husband crossed the border illegally from Romania in 86. And uh, my two boys and uh, with me, we arrived in Australia in 87, exactly in the same day when he crossed the border, in the same day, in the same month, exactly a year after. Okay. And, Interesting. Uh, we start our life again in Australia. We didn't speak any English when we arrived there. And with two boys, it was hard. I can my imagine. My husband had to work hard. He was driving the taxi. He was cutting the grass for a while. The first took us two years to pass our, uh, to pass our medical exam, Australia Medical Association exam, to be able to work in Australia. By bad go bad God grace, in two years, we were able to start working. Uh, so you have been both practicing medical doctors in Australia? Yeah, since 1990. Since 1990, okay. And you have a very interesting story because I understand that you are a third generation Seventh-day Adventist? Yes, I'm third generation Seventh-day Adventist, so is my husband. And um, sad to say, we did not understand the great value of our health message. Uh -huh. Being a medical doctor, we should know even more than other people. But unfortunately we didn't because now you, you had the impression you know it. And when you are stuck with a problem, you realize how deficient and how many problems you have and you do not know the health message. Now, what opened your eyes? It happened, my husband, 12 years ago, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And you are diagnosed with such a disease. You are so shocked. And at that stage, we thought, what we have done wrong. So it happened about that time. I have listened to one of your DVDs. Uh -huh. And from that one, I was listening again to life at its best. And I was wondering myself, said, how come I did not know this at all? Did you... Why I did not know it? Did you find the information credible or were you skeptical? No, no, no. I was not, I was not skeptical at all because it's so nice presented and so clear. And you have a lot of footage there which it counts for us because I did not believe it in it, you know. Uh -huh. And after that I start uh, listening to some other people and say, wow, it is so much which I did not know. My husband had to have radiotherapy which was a terrible, he was in a terrible situation and uh, eventually he survived that and uh, we knew we have to change our lifestyle because it was our lifestyle which brought the disease to us. Were you vegetarian? Yes, we've been sort of vegetarian. We were eating meat occasionally, very rare. Once a month, once a two months, once a three months. I mean, if if it was there, we'll eat. But we were not eating a lot of meat. But we were eating a lot of trans yeah. fats. We were eating French potatoes. Do you know how that one? Uh -huh. Potatoes and eggs and feta cheese. And you put sour cream on top and you put them in the oven. So we have full of oxidized cholesterol. I was not aware of that. Uh -huh. I was not aware of anything you have to have about the importance of omega-3. So, so many things which I did not know. It's not not funny to realize you don't know these so important things. And uh, 
After a while I said we have to change. About the same time, my mom had a fall. My mom was eight years old by that time and she had a compression fracture in her lumbar vertebra. I remember I was looking at her and said, it's nothing which I can do for her, poor mom. She's eight years old and I cannot help her. So by that time when I listened to your DVD with uh, utterly amazing, about the dairy and the calcium I and the regeneration of the mom, bone. We have to get rid of this. And mom said, no, I eat like that all my life. I like my feta. I said, mom, we have to. So we went and we bought tofu. Oh, what an experience when you have for the first time tofu. We said, oh, this is yuck. How can you eat this? But we stopped all the dairy products. My mom had a DEXA test, which is uh, screening for her osteoporosis, how severe it was. And she had severe osteoporosis. We find a bit later on my mom had celiac disease as well, which was contributed to her severe osteoporosis uh -huh. at that stage. But we did not know when she was diagnosed. And disease so starts in the gut, right? Yes. All the disease starts in the gut, and especially with the new science available, it is fascinating to see um, how the gut is making you. And um, I said, Mom, have some osteoporosis tablets. Mom couldn't take them. She had such a bad stomach pain after that, and she couldn't take them. I said, stop them and take calcium and vitamin D. About a month later on, we found about changing about the dairy products and we stopped it completely. She was um, having more greens and more minerals. Within a year and a half, we screened her again for osteoporosis. I could not believe my eyes. Meanwhile, she was treated for her celiac disease, so she was not having gluten as well. She was increasing the greens, she was having more minerals, because the bone is not just calcium and vitamin D. We, need, we, we have to have them all. And um, I have another test. And her DEXA test was minus 1.8. From minus 3.6 within a year and a half. I couldn't believe my eyes. And that is at... That is a, a range for a good young adult. Yes, and she was well over 80. She was well over 80, and 80 after she had a fracture as well. It happened this to, to some of my other patients. And that opening my eye was opening my eyes so I said, wow, look what this can... So I start believing because we know we doctors are so... We think we know it all. Actually, in 2005, my son, Dennis, come to me and said, mom, Look what I read in the uh, Scientist American. They said actually if you eat uh, calcium and cheese, it actually it's taking calcium out of your bone. I Correct. remember exactly where I was. I was in my husband's clinic at the uh, entrance there and he showed me the magazine. And I said, come on, who knows what rubbish is that? Don't we know? I was so ignorant and so I know it all. You know, I didn't even read the article. I can't believe it. And it took me another seven years to come to the reality. So it's there in the science, yeah. and we did not know it. When I started my research on protein and the effect on calcium metabolism, I applied to the government funding agency for money, and they refused. They said there's no difference between an animal protein and a plant protein, so why should they fund me? And I explained to them in a, in a rather lengthy way that there is a profound difference in the amino acid, acid composition ratio. and ratios, but they still wouldn't fund me. Mm. And so we privately funded our first research projects and uh, eventually when they saw the results, they started funding me. Mm. But uh, I understand the resistance that you yep. are talking about. Yes, yep. absolutely. That's what happened. And after that we have patients, after patients which were improving. Because, you know, we were 
I put now lifestyle, and meanwhile the lifestyle medicine come through. You know, it was not known before. It, it just happened a few, um, more than 12 years in America. In Australia we have just the second uh, Australian lifestyle conference, you know. So it, the, the people are putting it together a little bit more than before. Yes. So you are applying this information uh, to your patients? Applying to my patients with great results with great results, results which I've never thought I will have. Now, tell me what happened to your husband when you changed your lifestyle? What happened to my husband? My husband didn't have his cancer back because we know once you have cancer, you have a chance. Your cancer will come back anytime. It'll come out of remission, yes. And my husband was so disappointed. Uh, he, he was studying a lot into prostate cancer. He's an expert into it. And he attended the conference and he said, look, he couldn't sleep that night. And I said, you will not believe what they said there. And they said, look, they have a lot of 30 patients and uh, they, which they have a tumor like him. His tumor was 1.1 centimeters. So it was not a big tumor. But his PSA was absolutely normal. He did not have any high PSA. And they said in that conference they told us they check uh, the patient, they have bone, uh, bone marrow biopsy. And 30% already they have cancer cell with one centimeter tumor in pancreas, ah. in um, prostate, sorry. And so the cancer, it's spread so we know it's not one avenue to the cancer it's not one cause only there are so many so we have we start working on all the avenues so we change our diet we improve the greens we uh, my husband is exercising very badly um, very badly he walks seven kilometers a day which is a rule for him and he runs as well uh -huh. because later on uh, after we've been um, attending the American Lifestyle Conference in San Diego 2014, I learned about uh, lipoprotein A, which I did not know about it. It is a kind of sticky cholesterol, it's A stands for adhesive. Uh -huh. uh, it's a time of very bad cholesterol, which is considered to be 10 times worse than the bad cholesterol which we consider. Uh -huh. And when we check ourselves, I was normal, my husband had it 10 times bigger than it's supposed to be. So I said, wow, what we are doing with that? So we have to change lifestyle for this as well. So eventually we brought it down to one, one and a half time from 10 times, which is still good. So we, we, we try to do our best. We um, check uh, homocysteine level, which was high as well. And this is another killer, uh, especially, and check his coronary artery disease. And unfortunately he had some coronary artery disease, which we hope to keep in control and it is well knowing and a lot of research done, you can keep in control your coronary artery disease. I see. Now tell me, have you got any other experiences with your patients? Uh, yeah, where, I do. I where do there's been a turnaround, even in people that are quite advanced in age? Yes, I have a, a great experience with one of my patients. Actually, he was a retired ophthalmologist. And his daughter, who is a great believer in the, our health message, um, she brought him to me and said, Daddy, you have to see Dr. Coralia because she is doing some lifestyle medicine there. And he asked, what is this lifestyle medicine? He said, just to change a bit your lifestyle. It's not food only. You have to walk a bit. You have to exercise a bit. You have to watch how much water you are drinking. Anyway, she was, uh, he, uh, he arrived to my clinic and he was very resistant to change, being a doctor too. Yes. They're the most stubborn, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> and he said, I, I don't want to change. But anyway, he came with his GFR was 14, which is a limit. This means you, you, you are a candidate for dialysis. So you have your kidney are gone. He was end stage kidney failure. He had diabetes for 30 years. He had high cholesterol. He had hypertension. And uh, eventually he said, good, I will change. And I told him, for 10 days, would you like to try? And his uh, daughter said, Daddy, I will take you to the restaurants. In Melbourne, we do have a lot of vegan and vegetarian restaurants. I will take you to the restaurants and we have restaurant food all the time. He said, that's okay, we'll go for 10 days. I gave him a paper and in 10 days, he checked his blood test again. I could not believe myself when he came back with GFR 19, 
within 10 days. Excellent. I did not believe myself. So what does it mean? This means the mechanism of healing of our body, it is built in our... Because we know now, food is information. Absolutely. Food is information for our body, for our genes, for our microbiome. Food is information. There are so, feedback mechanisms that we like, do not yet fully understand. No, we, the, more you, the more I try to understand, the more I go into biochemistry and into, uh, in molecular biology, the more you are lost. You are lost and you know our body is extraordinary. It's God made. So when the diet was prescribed by God, that was the optimum diet. Any deviation from that course will create problems. No doubt about this. I'm so convinced. And it is more than that. I think it is, has to do with the obedience. You know, God told us we have to eat in this way and we know it better. Now, when you discovered this and you shared it with your fellow believers overseas, they were all excited and, and decided they were all going to follow this health message as well, correct? They are not so all excited, <laughs> but the people with they have problems, because I think God in His love tried to open our eyes using these massive calls, hey, open your eyes and see. But why is it that we must first get sick before we will because consider we a change? Are ignorant and we presume we know it all. That's, I'm talking about me. I mean, I should have read that article a long time ago. And I said, no, 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 didn't I learn calcium metabolism? Didn't I know thyroid is, um, thyro um, vitamin D, parathyroid, and uh, calcium axis? Didn't I know and this? push pull yes, mechanism, so and calcitonin, yeah. and parathyroid hormone, yeah. and, and that's it, no, and you, no matter you think, what you, you think, eat. You think you know. And um, I remember about 12 years ago when uh, I went to a medical conference, and I found out uh, the role of kidney in diabetes, I said, uh-oh, kidney have a role in diabetes. I did not know it before. And like now we know there are eight organs, eight facets of diabetes. It's not only muscle and uh, um, pancreas and liver. We have, have to do with our brain, we have to do with our gut, have to do with our um, lot of, much more problems. Even the receptors on your tongue will tell your body when sugar is available and what the response will be via the central nervous system of your glands to that kind it's of... It's fascinating. It, I mean, the interconnections are just amazing. I just read an interesting book which was written by a professor of uh, University of California in Los Angeles. His name is Emerald Meyer. He studied for 40 years mind-gut connection. Yes. Fascinated. He has written in his book, we have discovered, discovered until now 20, 28 receptors for plants polyphenols in our gut. Uh -huh. The receptor from plants polyphenols today, what are they doing there? They found of, uh, a receptor for, uh, for smell there. What are they doing there? We don't know. They find... Well, the evolutions will tell you that's co-evolution. They find 26 types of bitterness receptors. So he said, we don't know what they are doing there. I found it fascinating. You know, plants receptors uh, being there, polyphenols being there. This means we've been designed to eat plants. Absolutely. We've been designed to eat plants, but not only that. If you have a particular diet and your receptors are activated in certain ways, that is actually eventually translated into your epigenes and you can That's transfer exactly. it to the next generation. To the fourth generation. So if you have a bad diet with bad connections, that will be transferred to the next generation. You it's just incredible. look today, when I've been in the airport, just when we arrived here, we were waiting for Meryl to come. And you see a big lady and you see her son, which is coming even bigger, and you can see it is just epigenetics. It's we epigenetics. Know. That's what it is. And our legal system today is such that you are legally actually not allowed to confront people 
in our country, for example, if, if somebody arrives in the hospital and he's very sick and he's constipated and he's this and he's that, then uh, you're supposed to treat him, but he could actually prevent you from talking about lifestyle because it's invasive to his freedom. It's changing a little bit now. Yes, now, it's changing. now even national guidelines in treating the disease. You have diabetes, yes, you have to have lifestyle, diet and exercise and medication. But it not not happened a few years ago, but it's changing. So slowly we are changing. Slowly people are becoming aware. Yeah, aware of the importance because it's a disaster how sick we are. Now, what can we do to get people to understand this concept. You were saying that uh, tofu tastes like nothing. T tofu is actually a miracle food because it tastes like nothing. That means you can give it any flavor you want. That's it, you can. You can make it into something yeah. gorgeously sweet and delicious like a dessert or you could make it into sour something or savory or into something sour. You can change it into whatever you like. So uh, I'm always so fascinated when the, those that are so contrary to the health message, the first thing they will knock is the tofu. Mm. But they won't knock the meat, which has the same sort of uh, criteria. You also have to add the flavors that you want in order to get anything decent out of it, but they won't change to the other. What I discussed to my patients I have the China study because it's an available book there it's on, on study. my desk. Yes. And um, I show them because I have uh, permission from Professor, uh, from Professor um, uh, Campbell to um, share his uh, information from his book. And he have a very interesting study. He was doing um, 50, 500 calories from plant-based, 500 calories from animal-based. And he See, what sort of nutrients we have in this? And I share this with my patient and they are shocked because it's terrible. He said, look, let's have tofu, um, tomatoes and um, lima beans, peas, potatoes, and beef, pork, chicken, and whole milk, equal amounts, 500 calories each, and see what nutrients in them. We have equal amount of protein and people are is that protein in plants? People are not aware plants have protein. Yes. We have nine times more fat. In animal base we have the cholesterol, in plant we don't have any. We have 31 grams of fiber, in the meat we don't have anything. Yes. But we go to beta carotene we have 29,900 and we have just 17 in in, in the, meat. In the animal product, yeah. We have vitamin C 72 times more. We have vitamin B9 60 times more. We have 22 times more vitamin E. We have 10 times more magnesium, two times more calcium. That was his research. So I'll tell them, look what we're eating, nutrient depleted. You eat this today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, where Eventually, will end. there will be Eventually, consequences. Yes. So the people get impressed. I actually, I had a medical rep who came to me. You know how they tell you of the new products, and and after he finishes what he have to say, I said, "Can you take a photo of this book?" And he said, "Yes." I said, "Go and read it." That's all. What he, he was a massive man. He had 150 kilograms. He came back three months to see me. He had 101 kilograms just by changing his, his diet. diet accordingly to the China study. Uh -huh. He was so impressed. So it happened. So people will do this. Now, what I find interesting is it started, starts with the health message. But once you implement the health message, something happens to the mind. Yeah. And something happens to the spirituality as well. Did you, find, did you find that in your experience? Yes, our health message is the right hand of the gospel. So this is, a health, this is a gospel message, this is a health message, and it is our heritage. And the more we implement it, the more impact will, will have on you.
without any doubt. The more you love to read your Bible, the more you go and read the spirit of prophecy, which told us so long time ago, and we have everything there we should have known. Yes. And sadly, our health message is taken away and by the New Age movement and uh, we are left with nothing. Yes, and they got it the so the right. They got it so right and they got the worship so wrong. Absolutely. So it's what I also found that fascinating that uh, truth, when it's linked to false worship, is it's, it's a total disaster yeah. because the devil can use the health message to make his people more spiritually inclined towards evil even. So without the Spirit of God, yeah. there is no way that uh, the health message guarantees a better spirituality. You have to acknowledge that it comes from God and you have to want to serve him in order to experience the benefits. And we, we cannot do this by ourselves. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to implement the changes. Yes. In ourselves, we are not able to do. And we have to, when I speak to the people and I told them, you have to change this, this. And there are three, three categories of people which are severely sick and they are desperate and they wanted to do the change. Mm -hmm. There are people which in the middle, um, I am not sure, and there are people which are not interested, they are sick and they prefer to die without doing uh, uh, a change. But I had another experience with one of my patients, she's an extraordinary lady, she's a professor of physics, and she got absolutely terrible disease, an acute bout of rheumatoid arthritis, she couldn't move. She told me my husband was to have to carry me to go to the toilet. I couldn't walk. Sent her to the specialist. She started the normal treatment like she has to start with the methotrexate and all that stuff. She couldn't tolerate the drug. She was so sick. She had such severe side effects. She couldn't take it. And eventually she came to me and being a very clever lady, show her, look, there is some evidence here, change your lifestyle. And she starts changing, and she starts studying articles after articles. I have to do this, yes, I need more vitamin C, yes, I need more plants, yeah, I need to get rid of this, I need to get... Eventually she become completely vegan. And because her se disease was so severe, she was gluten intolerant as well, not celiac, gluten intolerant. She had to give up her bread as well. By giving up her bread completely, she started improving so much and she took all her disease in her hands. She knows if she will have something, will upset. She understood the rule of her disease was because of the, her gut was completely destroyed because she had a stressful life and uh, as you have a stress, in, a lot of stress in your life, your gut is affected by cortisol. Cortisol is destroying your gut, it's making, destroying the permeability of the gut and it's increasing the inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis factor, alpha and all that stuff, they are rising and it's, it's a vicious circle. And she understood all and she's absolutely better now. So how did she reduce her cortisol levels? She had to give up working. She had to stop. And she said, I cannot go back. Because of the stress levels? Because of the stress level. Yes. Because I have to, I have to give up. There are also uh, some, some natural means to lower those, like ashwagandha is one of them. No, there are some. Yes. I don't know all these uh, plants. There are a lot of more, you know, because again, it's, 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 it, yeah. for me it's like I'm uh, expanding my knowledge too much to, to, the field, to, the, field, <laughs> to yeah. the field where I was not, not familiarized with it at all. Yes. So, but she, she has done it by itself. Yes. She was doing it because when you are desperate, you do it. These are and if the, you are clever, you do it. Some of these foods, they call them adaptogens mm. because uh, they won't particularly do one thing, they adapt according to the needs of the body. 
So they have found that uh, ashwagandha is one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, Asian ginseng is another yeah. one. And if you incorporate those natural uh, herbal foods and roots into your diet as well, to alleviate the problem, she, together with good nutrition, you can actually... She's very grateful to me, and she said, yeah, just because of you, I'm like that. I said, <laughs> I haven't done anything. I just told you, and you have done it, you know, because... Uh, there is truth there, you tell to the patient, for example, in patients with diabetes, I have great results, you know, reducing the insulin level, cutting down the medication, but some of them, they don't want it, they want to stay like that. Yeah. And uh, I remember a young man, he was just 42, Indians, Indians, they have more background, they get much more younger diabetes for some reasons. And um, he was obese, he was over, uh, obese, not overweight, and uh, told him what to change, and he changed this and that and that. Eventually he was left with one tablet only, instead of having insulin and so, coming to nearly ideal, nearly ideal weight. I told him, if you go real to ideal weight, and let's go back to the 89 years old retired ophthalmologist. Yes. Suddenly he realized his um, blood pressure tablet, he does not need his blood pressure tablet, and we cut them by quarters, by quarters, by quarters. Now he is on no blood pressure tablet uh -huh. at all. And um, he's still taking his cholesterol tablet, but he had, you know, I try in my clinic to assess their nutritional status, that's what I try to do. All of them are vitamin D deficiently, severely. He had his homocysteine level 49 which is extremely high level because normally it's 10 by less. So even in Australia where you have a lot of sun, he has a vitamin D deficiency? Yes, yeah, because you stay inside, who is seeing you? Yeah. yeah. And um, he had extremely low uh, level of omega-3 index because I check omega-3 index. It is a test which you have to pay for it, but the patients are happy. And I'll show them, look, all your body is suffering for this. All your cell membranes, they are not functioning properly because they don't have enough omega-3 in them. So it does make sense, you know, people need to see figures they to get more aware of uh, the problem. Yeah. I find it fascinating that you've given us these examples of your patients that were older already, like your mother or mm. this, this elderly gentleman that you were talking about that had such an improvement in his parameters. Mm. Have you got any other case studies that uh, you found particularly interesting? Yes, I have a lot of patients which they have, uh, they are proof the lifestyle medicine is working. Uh, this was a 75 years old man who came with dizziness and being unwell. He had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all the disasters which all the people have. And eventually I, uh, I said, let, let's have a carotid ultrasound to see how his brain circulation is. And uh, we have the results and it was 85% block one of his carotid artery. I said, oh, of course there is some reason for dizziness there, but we know we have the circular wheels and the circula cerebral circulation is great, designed by God. Just in case if one is blocked, it will work, run on the other side. And uh, I told him you have to change. He was actually a professor, this fellow. And, uh, and he said, um, I'll change. I'll start walking, I will start, um, I, I change my lifestyle, not to the full extent, but he changed at least, first of all I told them you, you have to cut off processed meat. Processed foods are full of trans fats and a lot, causing a lot of health problems. You cut your processed meat and you cut your cakes out, and your ice cream and your croissants. And he said, that's okay, I'll do this. A year and a half, I checked his um, carotid artery again. To my big surprise, it was 49 percent. Great improvement. 85 to 49. Great improvement. After he was seeing was getting a bit better, he couldn't be bothered to keep it as strict as it was. Three years later on, I checked it again. It was 75. Blocked again. Blocked again. It's going yo-yo, you can see exactly, exactly feedback response, you know. To my surprise, the last time when I check it, he was completely lost. His carotid artery was completely blocked. 
Because it gone back to the original gone lifestyle. Back to original lifestyle. Uh -huh. So that's exactly what happened. You know, it's so obedience is very important. Obedience is important, and it's part of the key because the people, once the people get a little bit better, they think that's enough. I don't need to do anything else. So I'm better now. So I can go back to where I used to be. Yeah. And it's not like that. In every disease, once you get better, you have to keep the same lifestyle. You have to give your body proper nutrition. You have to give your body proper exercise to be able to stay at the same level. Otherwise, your body will go back because if you feed your body rubbish... So in other words, what you are saying, this is a lifestyle decision. It's not a tablet. It's not a cure to solve the problem and then you go back to your old That's lifestyle. Exactly You'll get the same is. problem yeah, back. Exactly like that, yeah. And if you already had the problem, it'll come back much faster than it did originally developed. Yeah. Any okay. other examples? I did have another lady. This lady came to me so sick, she was hardly able to walk when she walked in. This lady had liver transplant because she had liver cirrhosis. She never drank this lady. But she had fatty liver as a young girl. So we know very well the fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can end up with in cirrhosis in some people. And she had high cholesterol, hypertension, hypothyroidism. And she came with such a terrible leg pains. She was on so many painkillers. And so, many, so much medication, I was shocked to see her list of medication. And um, she was a Seventh-day Adventist lady, and I told her, you have to change. You have to change what you eat. And she said, yes, I listened to your presentation on Sabbath, and this is why I came to you today. So I want to change my lifestyle. So and I said, good. So let's say, where to start? She said, I already started. I cut them all off. I don't touch them. I said, but do you know it's hard? You have to go them, uh, you have to go slowly. She said, not with me. I'm so sick, I don't have time to go slowly. So she was so determined to change completely her lifestyle radically from, she said, I went in the fridge and I throw all the fridge out. Everything what I was, I had in the fridge was unhealthy. So I said, look, you have to cut. She was on so much morphine. She was on the gabapentin. She was on panadine for She was on paracetamol. I said, do you want to get back to your liver transplant? <laughs> so much medication, you'll get gas so quickly. I explained to her everything. And we gradually cut them off. And I said, you don't need them so many. It was cholesterol medication which she needed, it was high blood pressure medication which she needed, it was hypothyroidism medication which she needed. But her thyroid was so badly controlled, it was completely out of range. She was vitamin B12 deficiently, vitamin B9 deficiently, vitamin D deficient, all high homocysteine, no way, omega-3 index. As she started changing so quickly, I never have a patient which recover so quickly, was so determined. Within two weeks she was able to walk. This lady was not able to do two steps. She, was, she fell in her garden and she stayed there. She cried until her 90 years old father came to help her to, to get up. And now, if you have see her now, and this happened only five months ago, if you will see her now, she's able to walk. She lost 18 kilograms. Her health, it is completely different. She's able to walk, she's able to do her, her housework work properly. So it's great improvement. So determined to keep going and to keep doing what she was starting doing right. Well, it all started off, you say, by watching a, a number of DVDs and listening to some talks. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you've been a great inspiration to me. Your DVDs um, and life, life at its best, they've been absolutely convincing. And not only that, your DVDs onslaught, total onslaught, they've been so inspiring. 
inspired by the Spirit of God. I get a lot of opposition because of those. Mm, I don't think so. I think I understood Christianity and I realized where I am watching your DVDs. It was a great inspiration for me. For me, I, I consider them extraordinary. Well, I praise God that many people that have watched them have managed to... I did to, have yeah. a lot of people which consider them the same. Three months ago, I have a lady which work in my clinic, a young lady, 26 years old Indian lady. And again, she told me, I come to you because I've seen you in the church because when I speak health message. And I asked her, how are you? Are you Seventh-day Adventist? She said, no, I'm not yet, but I'm attending Seventh-day Adventist church. And I said, how come? She told me I was very interested in prophecy. My parents, my parents are Catholics, not practicing Catholics, but I was very interested in prophecy. And uh, I start Googling, looking there and there, and I find Professor Walter Faith. And I said, and I start watching his DVDs, and he said, he is so spot on. He is so right. And one day I decided I wanted to become a Seventh-day Adventist. And I actually walk into the church and I told them, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. And she'll, she'll be baptized very soon. I well, don't know if she was already one. I'm glad for that. Yeah. And I had another lady, the, the daughter of the retired ophthalmologist. She discovered the truth about Sabbath, watching your DVDs. So I know another fellow who came walking in the church again. So your message is going there and it's great. God is doing his work through Is there, uh, are people watching the channel, the Amazing Discoveries channel in Australia? Yes, they're watching it. I'm grateful for that. They're watching it, yeah. So what would you like to tell the medical world out there and the medical doctors out there that are so used to their prescription drug methodology now there's a time and a place for everything. I believe in allopathy. Yeah. That uh, the doctor is absolutely necessary, but I also believe in naturopathy and that marriage between the two. I think How what's the problem with us, do you know, in emergency, in acute medicine, our medicine is great. We have great results. We should not negate the results which absolutely. we have. Absolutely. But when we go to the chronic diseases, we are so bad because it's taking a couple of uh, decades to develop a disease, you know? And they wanted to fix it with a pill. You can't do it. You cannot do it. And only the people which understand this is a cause effect. I mean, regarding me, at the age of 42, I have my gallbladder out. Uh -huh. By that time, I did not have any idea. It was my lifestyle. I thought, mm, it happened in the family. My, my father had gallbladder stones. But don't diets run in families? Yes. <laughs> so I found out later on. And my poor mom, now she's 93, she developed gall stone now. And two years ago, two weeks ago, she had pancreatitis because of the gallbladder stone. I couldn't believe, and I thought, I'll lose her. So that would be the end of her. Within five days, she recovered in the hospital so quickly. The doctor told me they couldn't believe a 93 years old can recover so quickly from pa pancreatitis. She was in the hospital on Monday, I've taken her home on Saturday. So what did you do, change her? Lifestyle? She had, she had in the, no, she had, she had quite a good lifestyle, but it was because of an impact, because of the gallstones, you know, impacted on, on the uh, cholecyst and it was blockage of the, mm, and they opened the, can, the channel, they gave her antibiotics to treat her, and she was recovering very well. Because she had a good lifestyle? She, she had a good life, she had a very good, uh, yeah, very, very good lifestyle, but unusual to get, uh, to recover so quickly because pancreatitis can kill. So, from a doctor to the doctors out there, what do you want to tell there them? There is a lot of new science available. You just go there and read it. A lot, especially the microbiome, the new science of microbiome, it is there to confirm 
all disease starts in the gut. Our microbiome, it is our second brain. It is our second liver because all the detox it happened there. And it is our second immune system. Actually, 70 to 80 percent of our immune system reside in the gut. And only 20 to 30, it's somewhere else. And our gut, it is training our immune system. Uh -huh. So it is so important in our health. So the more we read about microbiome, the more we understand what this, the more we understand how we've been created to live on God formula. It's like a thread, you know, eat your plants. Feed your body with nutrients, with fiber. Feed your microbes. After you feed your microbes, your microbes will fermentate that stuff, will extract un unextractable plants polyphenols, which they are doing miracles in your gut. And about 40% of our blood metabolites, the substance which go in our blood, are manufactured by our gut microbes. So, but what type of gut microbes you have? Because you can have, there is, in obesity we have an index. Now you, they just can check your stool and they told you if you're obese or no, just by the type of bacteria which you have uh -huh. there. So it's a lot of science, it's fascinating. I like it and I read a lot about it and I do enjoy it because it's logical. So what is your, what is your feeling about uh, fermented foods like sauerkraut or they are extraordinarily good. Yeah, we know they are sauerkraut is full of lactobacilli which are feeding your gut. But we know, they know our gut is doing all 90% of our serotonin. Our gut is bacteria is doing our GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, which is uh, the new, most abundant neurotransmitter, which is settling our anxiety. Yes. It's, our mm, microbes are doing our glutamate, which is involving cognition and memory and in, in learning and in everything. So our gut is important, especially in depression and anxiety. Do, you, do we wonder why we have so much anxiety and depression these days? Because people are eating so wrong. They don't feed their brain. Their it's brain an epidemic in the world. It's an epidemic in 21st century, yes. everywhere. I, I was presenting a lecture in Monash University a few uh, months ago. And uh, as I walk in, it was just a big standard panel. And it was written on it, one in four adolescents meet the criteria for a mental disease. I was shocked. Yes. So what are we doing about this? We have to change what we eat. This is we this generation. This is just generation. Then we have to change what we eat. If we eat the way we eat now, where we'll get. So to my patients with depression, always I give them supplements with B vitamins. I, I teach them to eat brain food. I just told them, go on Google brain food, eat what is there, have, give nutrients for your brain to be able to work properly. Absolutely. And we have great results. Wonderful. I have another very interesting patient. That was a patient of mine, he was 65. And he came to me because he had blood in the urine. I sent him to have an ultrasound and he had a 2.2 centimeters tumor on his bladder. His tumor was resected uh, resect, and he had three months of chemotherapy. After three months, the tumor came back. The specialist told him, your tumor is so aggressive, you have to have your bladder out. He said, no, I'm not doing that. He have seen again the specialist showing him, look, this is a very aggressive tumor. You have to have your bladder out, other way you will not survive. He said, doesn't matter, I don't want it to have it. He came to me and he said, I know you know something and because the people know I'm doing sort of lifestyle, a lot of lifestyle medicine there. And I told him, look, will you do what I told you to do? He said, yes, I will. He said, go plant-based. Go plant-based only, get rid of your dairy products completely and eat greens only and vegetables and fresh as much as you can and um, avoid all the animal products. And he said, he's a Greek fellow. And he said, yes, I'll do. I'll get Mediterranean only. And he was starting to change, change his diet and I advised him to have extra vitamin C, high dose of vitamin C. 
And he, in three months later on, he had another cystoscopy. So they look in the bladder to see what's happening there. To my surprise, and to his surprise, the tumor was not there. It was gone. Anymore. Yes. And this happened three years ago, and he still have every six months repeat his cystoscopy, he's okay. I did have another lady with a similar problem. She changed what she ate, but she was still keeping smoking. Her tumor didn't move at all. So it's not one part and fit it all. Every disease is different. Everybody is different. What we have to do, we have to do our best what we know. Yes. So that lady did not respond at all. So, but I was so happy with him and he said, yeah, you have to put a big sign here. <laughs> I said, what a big sign? You have done what I told you. It's, it's, not, it's not about... Uh, well, he is the sign that is walking around. Yeah. And it's a talking sign, you can tell others. Yeah, and uh, actually he was not eating a lot of raw vegetables, he was eating steamed vegetables. And uh, because one day uh, I asked him, Get, show me what you are eating. And he, he, he brought a, a bit of a stuff and it was really tasty the way you are doing because to eat like that all the time is not easy. Yeah. He said, I'm going and buy all the greens, I steam them, and after that I add a bit of carrots, a bit of potato, a bit of sweet potatoes, purple potatoes, and he add vegetable oil, cold press, olive oil, and lemons, and he was eating stuff and it was really nice and he's still enjoying it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it has been fascinating talking to you and uh, I'm very glad that you discovered the health message and that you I cannot can thank God for that. And that you can bring this message to your people over there in Australia and to your people in Romania. You still speak Romanian? Yes, I still speak Romanian. You Romania. must make a DVD in Romanian and you yeah, must I tell your story. I have it. I have it. it you is, have done yeah. that? Wonderful. Thank you very much and uh, I hope the Lord blesses you in your ministry. You're most welcome. I try to do my best and uh, I cannot praise God for opening my eyes. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everybody will take heart and implement the health message so that uh, we can have healthier bodies and clearer minds and can get that spiritual connection that we need in this time that we are living in. Thank you.